happy Wednesday. It is live with Colorado Beef, and we are hanging out here in the kitchen studio. Uh, ready? We've got an amazing recipe for you today. We are doing Irish beef and beer stew. Because I'll tell you what, even though it's sunny outside, it is still cold somewhere, and we have a great opportunity to uh, enjoy stew at the uh, second round of winter, right? Because winter's still here, and we know in Colorado that winter could come two or three times a season. So we're doing beef and beer stew, and I'll tell you what I love about it. If you were with us last month, we showed you how to effectively use your um, Instapot, not Instapot, your uh, air fryer. I'll tell you what, we know you got a lot of tools for Christmas, whether it was an air fryer, whether it was an Instapot. The cool thing about tonight's recipe is I can do it right here in my Dutch oven if I want, and I can let it take the two hours and, and have that simmering and then smell and the house smells fantastic or I can save a little bit of time and I can do it in the Instapot as well. So uh, very excited to walk through this today. We've got a lot of cool things here. I've got Julie here from the Colorado Beef Council. She's going to be the moderator today. So if you have questions, please let us know in the comment section. Ask your questions. Let us know where you're watching from. Julie's going to be moderating. Hey, listen, she's mic'd up too. So don't make her have a hot mic moment tonight. So we're going to go through questions. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to talk through comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And then like we always say, don't forget to go over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website. Uh, up top, there's a tab. You can find recipes. You can find videos. You can find amazing things, including the beef locator map. So if you're looking to get some of that awesome Colorado beef for your fridge, for your freezer, for your belly, that is the place to go. We will connect you to local producers and ranchers that have some amazing things going for you. And I'll tell you what, when you buy local beef, it is pretty cool because you get to have your hand in what cuts you're picking. So you get to pick what steaks, what roasts, how much stew meat, how much ground beef. You have a lot of decisions to make buying local meat, and it's great because I'll tell you what, I love when I buy a half or a quarter because I get a ton of ground beef. And ground beef is great. You can use it in chili, you can use it in meatloaf, hamburgers, smash burgers, all of those cool things. So head over to cobeef.com, check out the cooking tab up top. That will give you the beef locator map, all the recipes, and more. Then, as always, huge thanks to all of our ranchers and producers and the Colorado Beef Council for having us uh, host these events every single month. We really appreciate it. We definitely appreciate all the work our ranchers and producers do to put that amazing Colorado beef in your fridge and your freezer. So, all right, let's talk through ingredients. You can see everything in front of me. I've got some chuck roast. So I have uh, about two to two and a half pounds of chuck roast. And I went through and trimmed a little bit of the fat, a little bit of that silver skin off. Uh, and I cut it into about one inch cubes. I've got one sweet yellow onion. I have eight ounces, a half a pound of um, uh, cremini mushrooms. I said you could ask for button mushrooms or use buttons. Love those creminis. They do a fantastic job. Listen, parsnip time. We're taking it old school with some root vegetables. So parsnip is in the carrot and parsley family. Much, much sweeter than a carrot. It's got just an amazing sweetness to it. And the perfume off here is really nice too. A little bit fragrant, a little bit bright. It's going to add a, a lot of flavor to that. We're going to use some squeeze tube garlic today. Then we have a turnip. Mild flavor in here. Smell is incredible. Great raw. You can eat this raw. Adds a really good depth of flavor. Uh, as well to our stew. And then we've got red bee potatoes. Those Colorado red bliss potatoes or those red bees, we just roughly dice those. We're going to show you how we do all of this here uh, as we get things going. All right, Julie, questions, comments, hostilities, anything? Not yet. Anyone we need to say hi to? Yes. Who should we say hi to? They're from North Carolina. North Carolina? You just uh, guess. Guess. They're from North Carolina. I have to guess. Yeah. Who do I know from North Carolina? I don't know. Um, Stephanie Chandler's watching. All right. Good to see you. Freddie Woodhoven in Boston is watching. Ah, uh, Freddie in Boston. We just okay, got, I really? just hung out with Freddie in San Antonio. He was slinging some pizza. So, PJ Marks is from Tarboro, North Carolina. I like it. I like it a lot. Very cool. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hey, in the description section of tonight's live, we have the link for today's recipe, shows you where you can get today's recipe from beefitswhatsfordinner.com. And then we also have what's coming up next month as well. 
Uh, we are going to jam pack this spring full of a lot of beefy, beefy content. So thanks for hanging out with us. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So I have my Instapot going here with today's dish. We're going to go ahead and bet that just a little bit. I, I want to show you what it's like uh, finished uh, as we get that done. I'm going to go ahead and cover it so we keep a little of that noise away. Now, I have my Dutch oven here. I preheated the Dutch oven. Go ahead and grab some gloves. And we're going to start doing a little cooking. Now, the great thing about this is it tells you multiple times in the recipe where you can add salt uh, and how you can add flavor and seasoning to this. So first opportunity to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of flavor, is when we brown off the meat. Then we have an opportunity when we add all the accoutrement, the ingredients in here, to add a little bit more seasoning. And then at the very end, when we finish this up, we have an opportunity to just finish the seasoning. Be careful. Don't go too heavy. Uh, we're going to use salt and pepper today. We're also using beef stock. Beef stock does have a little bit of salt in it. Uh, beer has a little bit of salt in it as well. So just be careful. You don't put salt plus salt plus salt plus salt. Get to the end and go, oof. I'd rather do a little bit less in the beginning, in the middle, and then at the end, pick it up and get it to me right where I want it. So. Fairfax Ace Hardware has joined us. I love it. And they reminded everyone that turnips are back in style. Turnips are back in style. I was pretty excited that this recipe has parsnips and turnips. I am uh, one of those weird people that likes those. <laughs> I like beets. I like all those random things. So, all right, let's go ahead and add a little bit of oil in here. I'm just using a canola olive blend, nothing too uh, out, of, out of craziness, just basic stuff. I cubed up that chuck roast. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our Dutch oven. The first point of order is we're going to go through and get that... Uh, Salted and seasoned just a little bit. We're going to cook this now for about uh, three to five minutes. We just want to start to brown that beef a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt in here. Tiny, tiny bit. All right. I'm just using some sea salt. Uh, I'm actually using some molding salt, one of my favorite salt. And then this fresh ground black pepper. So I'm using a nice crack, uh, cracked black pepper that we ground here. Uh, fresh. Okay, so beef is working, right? Let's talk a little bit about these uh, parsnips. First thing we're going to need to do, grab a piece of paper here. We're going to need to peel off that waxy exterior of the parsnip and the turnip as well. So uh, what I did here, I'm just leaving the ends as they are. I'm just going to carefully peel this. It smells so good. It literally smells like a combination. Uh, Julie's like, you're crazy. It smells like a combination between a juicy, sweet, delicious carrot mixed with parsley, right? Like if carrots and parsley got together and had an offspring, it's this right here. Uh, but it's really nice. It's uh, uh, very sweet. Uh, it has a really good fragrant flavor to it and has just a little bit of lemon as well. But what I'm doing here is just going through, peeling this, getting all that uh, exterior off. I'm going to peel the bottom as well, make sure we take any eyes or anything off there. And then don't worry about the uh, end here, we're going to trim that guy off. Keeping an eye on this beef as well, I'm going to stir that just a little bit here. Make sure we get everything evenly browned. And that's pretty much it on that, right? So what we'll do here is go ahead and trim that end off like so. Oh, it's so good. All right, stir up our beef here. Any questions, comments, anything? Matt Flugie says Matt Flugie. his favorite sound is meat sizzling. It's, that's a good, what do they call that, ASMR? Yeah. Isn't it that weird thing where people just watch? Yeah. Like, listen, listen. Forget, forget the Calm app where you listen to sounds of the ocean at night. We're going to make the Colorado Beef Council app that lets you fall asleep to the sound of sizzling meat. And I will tell you, during the winter months, Beef and What's for Dinner, was it NCBA or Beef and What's for Dinner that did the Beef Yule Log? See, yeah, I was going to say, we have that ASMR already, because the Yule Log, if you watch the whole thing, it's like an hour and a half. Roasting prime rib. Yes. The prime rib is the Yule Log. It's spitting and popping and roasting, and the fire's cracking and popping. It's, I mean, I've fallen asleep for a couple times. All right, so let's go ahead and get that ready to go here. Uh, I'm just going to carefully turn these into planks, and then what I'll do is take those planks and turn them into sticks. 
and then we're just going to cube them uh, or dice them. And I'm not going to dice them too small. I don't want them to melt away. I want there to be a little texture out of these as well. So we'll go ahead and just roughly dice them, chop them up or rough chop, whatever you call that. Here, good to go. All right, our beef is browning wonderfully. I turn the heat up just a little bit. What you'll notice when you uh, get ready to start browning your beef, your beef is going to release a lot of moisture. Uh, that moisture that's in there um, is going to start to come out. I'm compensating by turning the heat up a little bit. Question? Mic check. One of us doesn't have our mic right because it sounds like a phone mic. Hmm. I don't know. Check, right. check, check. I should be okay. We should be okay. All right, Matt Flugie, which one of us sounds bad? Matt Flugie, which one of us is going to say, Jason, should be. All right, so anyways, we give that meat, give that beef a stir real quick just to try to get some more of that moisture to evaporate. And then we finish our parsnip like this. Get that all cut and ready to go. And then we'll show you what we do on the turnip as well. Did, he, did Matt say who it was? Not yet. Not yet? All right, we'll figure it out. But Clay Schmitz is watching. Who is? Clay Schmitz. Oh, very nice. And my friend Geisha. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So we're going to keep, as you can see, look at this. Look at that beautiful browning we have on the meat. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to keep sautéing this meat till we get those beautiful brown crispy bits and then we are good who's my thing what say we think maybe it's just the fact that we've oh, got yeah. the fan from the yeah flat. Be. Yep. probably gets better when i'm over here right yeah yeah all right so crispy bits we're getting that deep brown off really nice now it's time time for parsnip right i'm sorry it's time for the turnip turnips are nice really mild flavor smell good you can shave them and eat them raw like a radish I'm going to peel that waxy part off again. So I'm just going through here. Actually, it probably helps if I show you here, right? Just going through with my peeler, getting all that off. I trim the top, trim the bottom. Obviously, we washed it. But I just wanted to show you how easy these are. Uh, don't be intimidated by them. Uh, super easy to prep, easy to cut, easy to eat. They taste fantastic. And the best part is there was no shortage of these at the grocery store today. They were fully stocked and ready to roll. All right. Trim these guys again into planks carefully, carefully, carefully. I'll hold this guy. Once I go into planks, I'll go into my sticks. Then I'll come back and just randomly dice them up like that. So pretty simple, pretty easy, right? I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. Just showing you how to get those done. So we have a Californian, Osman Hoff. I'm going to say it wrong, so I won't say it. Hossein. Nice. You know him? Yeah. From California? Love yeah. it. Thanks Paul for MacArthur is on with us. Who is? Paul MacArthur. Very cool. Thanks for joining us, everyone. All right. Look at this crispiness, right? Beautiful. I like to get that beef nice and brown. That starts to develop a lot of flavor. You actually get some of that umami flavor when you brown that beef out. We have a little bit of salt there, a little bit of pepper. Just magic. We get that uh, flavor started that way, and then we're just going to add to it. Uh, make it even more fun as we keep going. So there is parsnip. There is turnip prep done. We'll put those there. Potatoes are super easy, but I want to show you maybe real quick what I did to them. I just have some red bee potatoes, some baby red bees. I split them in half one way, split them in half again to make four wedges, and then I just went through the center of the wedges and cut it in half to just make some random pieces like that. Pretty easy, super quick. Again, I wash these, uh, and then I just cut them up real quick and easy to get the right size. I always feel like when I'm making stew, I want the vegetables to be a part of it. I want the meat to be roughly a certain size. I want the vegetables to be a part of it. I don't want them to melt. I want them to build some uh, viscosity, some thickness in that stew. So, beef is doing its thing over here. We're gonna let that meat, uh, some of those juices dry out a little bit more. And then we'll come back and get uh, keep going. Julie, any questions? Anything we got over there? No questions. Listen, we have everything fired up today. We have the laptop fired up so we can see your questions and comments there. We've got questions and comments on the phone. We've got the beef console laptop fired up. You have questions, we have answers. And as always, if we don't know, we're totally going to make it up. 
That's right. Absolutely. Pete Hansen is watching. Who is? Pete Hansen. Oh, and cool. then, oops, well, my goodness, I got to scroll a bunch. Uh, let's see. La Luke Scott. Donna Luke Scott. Gabriel. You know Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna from Michigan. Luke Scott's my buddy from Indiana. <laughs> Luke and I just hung out in Chicago together. All right. So the beef is getting nicely browned. I'm going to go ahead and take the beef out of here now uh, because... I want to get all those crunchy bits in the bottom, deglazed a little bit. We're going to saute our onions in there. We're going to add our garlic, really uh, develop some of that flavor. So let's go ahead and follow the recipe here. And it says we heated the oil, we removed the beef. Now we're going to add the mushrooms, onions, and garlic. So we added those creminis. And the reason I went with cremini uh, over button mushrooms, creminis have really good flavor. But the button mushrooms don't. Creminis are just that much better. So this is all about making this beef dish taste pretty amazing. Squeeze through garlic, literally the best invention ever. So we use that in there. That's the last of it. Now, if you listen, some sizzling going on in here. I didn't add any more oil to the pan because I'm going to use the oil that's in there. And what I'm trying to do is just roughly brown the uh, onion and mushrooms. And I say roughly, I mean lightly. Just going to lightly brown them to get a little bit of color, develop a little bit of flavor, and tone down those mushrooms just a teeny bit. So we'll do that here for a couple minutes as well. Turn our pan down. So Stephanie Chandler reminds us potatoes are delicious, especially ones from the San Luis Valley. They are. They really are. I'm not going to say Colorado doesn't make the best potatoes on earth, because we do. Uh, these were Colorado potatoes, by the way. So, yes, San Luis Valley potatoes are amazing, whether it's fingers whether it's uh, russet potatoes or those red potatoes or gold potatoes, amazing. All right. The only question you have is how do you keep from eating the beef out of the pan? <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, you know what? I, I usually try not to. It's not fully cooked. It's not going to hurt me if I eat it now anyways because it's delicious, it's wonderful, and, and it is what it is. Uh, I just try not to because I'll tell you what. This is a rabbit hole. At the minute I go down and eat one piece, I might as well just eat the whole pan and chop up another round of beef. So it's really hard for me to do it, but I have to force myself to wait. I just, I, I have to. It's hard, too, because it smells delicious, and there's some, like, crispy brown parts in here that I know would be a fantastic start to my evening. But I'm going to hold on. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So... The mushrooms and onions are good to go. Now, I'm going to pick my favorite dark beer. You can absolutely use an Irish stout. You can use whatever. I just have a really nice dark beer. What we're doing with the beer, we're getting a rich flavor. We're getting some caramel out of that beer as well. But we're deglazing the pan. So all of that beef happiness that's stuck to the bottom of the pan, mushrooms and onions, is now starting to release. So we're just going to give it a stir. And that was the whole beer, just an FYI. If you're going to sample the beer for quality control purposes, you need to make sure it's a 12-ounce beer. So if you start sampling early, just like with the beef, might as well crack a second one. So we had All a right. question about can you cook the meat till it's well done? I probably would not. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to tighten up that muscle even more. It's going to make an absolutely different stew. That meat's going to be really tough and chewy. I want to leave it just browned a little bit on the exterior because I want the next two hours. We're going to cook this. Uh, the recipe calls for cooking this low and slow or stewing it for about two hours. I want this meat to break down a little bit. I want it to soften. If I cook it to well done, I've taken all the juices out of there. I have tightened that muscle up super, super tight, and it's going to have a really hard time releasing. And you're going to have tough, tough little nuggets of meat. So by leaving it undercooked, I'm allowing it to break down a little bit better. I am just caramelizing it and browning it to start a little bit of flavor. I'm taking that Maillard reaction. I'm browning the, the meat and just getting a little bit better flavor. And like I said, too, this is great in a Dutch oven. You could do this uh, all day long, or not all day, but for two hours and just kind of let it do its thing. But I'm showing you the Instapot version uh, as well because I wanted to do it a different way so that we can show you multiple cooking options. Uh, maybe you're in a pinch and you get home and you're like, oops, I was late getting home or traffic was tight. And all of a sudden you're like, 
how am I going to get this dinner done? Now you have a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, if you want to start it at 4 o'clock, it'll be ready by 6. Ooh, and bread. Don't, don't let me forget I have bread, too. Because mm, why not? Yeah. All right, so we put the beer in there. We are set. We're going to add the uh, tomato paste now. Get that in here. We did the deglazing on there. Everything looks beautiful in here. Doing its thing. Stir in that tomato paste just a little bit. Like so. Then I'm going to add in, uh, I did a little, uh, a little extra here. I added uh, bay leaf to the dried thyme just because bay leaves add a good amount of flavor. I'm going to add my potatoes. I'm going to add my parsnips. I'm going to add my turnips. Put those guys down there, a small little layer. And now I'm going to carefully mix that up so I get everything kind of combined. Now, I haven't added any salt yet. I added salt and pepper in the beginning of the process when we were sauteing the meat, but I haven't added any yet. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till we get towards the end so I can finish the seasoning because it's easier to add a little bit of salt than it is to take it out. Once I add all the salt and all the pepper, it is done. There's really not a good opportunity for me to uh, modify it and take the salt out. It, I'm kind of stuck with it. So I'd rather have a little bit less and have to finish it a little bit more uh, then add too much and go, oops. All right, we're going to add the beef in here. I like to add the beef right on top. Stack all my dishes up here. Makes it easier to clean on the way out. All right. So, go ahead now. Flatten this out. We'll push that beef down. Then we're going to go ahead and add our beef stock. Beef stock says add it until it covers the beef. I have found about... Four cups works out perfect, uh, between three and four cups. So, we're going to leave that like so. That is pretty solid, and we're now going to cover it. Basically, what we want to do now is bring it to a simmer, right? Bring it up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer. We're going to let that simmer for a couple hours uh, because we're stewing. We're basically stewing this. We're going to check its doneness and judge its doneness based on the meat. So if that meat is nice and soft and tender, we know that that stew is probably in a, in a good place. But let's take a look and see what we have going on in the Dutch, or in the uh, Instapot. We made sure we released all the pressure. That is the most important thing. Uh, there is nothing coming out of here. I have it on the venting setting. There is nothing coming out of the top. And my red plunger is up, which tells me everything has released. Oh my word. I mean, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what to tell you. It looks delicious. Now, we pressurized this under high pressure and did it for about 30 minutes. And look at that. Beef just shreds. Okay, we're done. Uh, I'm going to get my bread. I'm going to soak up this uh, stuff. I'm going home to eat in the corner. But Okay, so what I'm going to do now, um, when you do the stew and, and the beef all of a sudden gets right to where you want it texturally, it's breaking down, it's nice and soft, it's nice and tender. The last thing that we want to do now is I'm actually going to turn the saute setting on on, this, on the stew because I want to bring the stew back up to temperature so that I can boil it a little bit, bring out some of the starches and the vegetables, but then also reduce that liquid just a little bit so I have a chance to uh, thicken that stew up. No question. You have what? done such a great job tonight. I have to stop talking. Wait, wait, wait. You say you've done a great job tonight. Like last time I didn't? Is that, uh, what, no. is that what I just heard? Uh, no. Uh, no. But well, you know what? We try to go through those recipes pretty well. I didn't make too many uh, adjustments, if you will. Uh, but this is a great recipe. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's March. Mm. We're bound to get at least one or two more snowstorms. Here in the beautiful state of Colorado, that centennial state, this is a perfect dish to uh, keep you happy. One of the cool things, too, when you're eating this stew, yes, it is absolutely amazing and fantastic the first time around, but I think stew gets better the second time, for sure. Now imagine you get up in the morning and you're trying to figure out what you're going to have for lunch. You can easily uh, add that stew to a mug. Have that as a little uh, road stew if you need to. Question? Anything? Nope. Just nope. a lot of thumbs up. Thumbs up. We like thumbs ups.
There's actually lots of people watching, but um, I will forget somebody, so I just kind of stop. Okay, I like it. Let me go in here and check this, the flavor of this real quick while it's cooking. Beautiful. Again, like I said with the seasoning process, I seasoned the beef in the beginning when I was caramelizing or sauteing it, browning it. I didn't add any seasoning in the middle because I know that, that beef stock has uh, some salt in it as well. But now I'm tasting it and it needs just a little bit. It needs a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. So I'm going to add maybe like a half teaspoon of that fresh cracked pepper. And I'm probably going to add two teaspoons of salt. And we'll just let that cook for a little bit and do its thing. We'll mix it in and let it cook. Is that kosher salt? It's uh, Malden. It's sea salt. Okay. Literally my favorite salt on earth. I, I don't know why. I don't use iodized salt. I like kosher salt too. I don't use iodized. I haven't used iodized salt in forever. I just, the salt is so robust. It's just, I don't know. I don't want to dork out talking about salt. It's lost power. Uh, where do we flip a switch? I'm not sure. While we went out here in the Ace uh, Barbecue Pit Studio, we are still live because we're live on Facebook. But I'll tell you what, this is uh, a weird occurrence because we've never, yet yeah, open the door a little bit. We've never lost power in here. But can they see me all right? Can you see all right? Uh, yeah. All right, perfect. So we'll keep going here. Uh, I'll, we can open that all the way. Well, but I don't have the sun. Oh, there. Okay. We should be okay. There we go. All right, so let me show you what this stew looks like here really quick. Uh, I want to scoop that into a bowl just so you have a chance to see kind of that finished product. And you're going to get yeah. get your bread while you're wandering? <laughs> I, I have never lost power in the middle of a Facebook Live, so that is a very interesting occurrence. Uh, I'm, I'll wait for my neighbors to come over and we'll verify if we all lost power or if it was just me. But All right, so I have a really nice... Uh, you can do Irish soda bread. I picked a really nice, like, ro that's my computer beeping because it has a battery backup. The I did a really nice rosemary garlic loaf that goes great with uh, the stew. Hey, leave the bread raw or, or untoasted, if you will. You could easily spread it with butter and toast it. Uh, you could grill it, do whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm just leaving it kind of by itself to do its thing. <laughs> How do you lose power in the middle of Facebook Live? Who cares, right? All right, let me go ahead and scoop this in the bowl here, and I'll come up close to the camera so you have a chance to see what this stew looks like. But we are judging. Let me come up here so you can see this. Ladies, tell me when I'm in a good spot. Can they see that? Looks yeah. great. Oh. There is our stew. Uh, the beef broke down beautifully. The potatoes broke down. The parsnip, the turnip. It smells absolutely amazing. The only thing you have to do now is figure out how much bread you need to eat this bowl of stew. Like I said, the best part is when you are done, cool this down because day number two is even better when it comes to leftover stew or reheated stew, right? Kind of that cook once, eat twice or three times depending on how big of a batch of stew you make. So, hey, once again, Thank you so much to our friends at Colorado Beef Council for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to do these lives every month. We definitely appreciate you coming to hang out with us and watching uh, and being a part of our live events. Don't forget, down in the description section there, you'll see what we have coming up. April 26th is going to be, right, 26th is our next live event. We've got cool things. We're grilling up for, uh, gearing up for grilling seasons. We're going to talk a lot about beef cuts and get you uh, ready to become the daddy-o of the patio, if you will. So uh, thanks again to all the Colorado ranchers and producers for all of the hard work they put into raising that amazing Colorado beef for us. And then, like I said, don't forget, head over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council website, where you can grab all of the videos, recipes, and more, and then find that amazing Colorado beef locator map. That's it. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us for Colorado Beef Live. We'll see you in April.